Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for joining in again for Transform. And um, I believe that you are being blessed. And that's why you are here. I believe that you have a passion to grow spiritually. And that's why you are here. So we're going to continue. We have been off uh, Transform for two consecutive Saturdays. Uh, but this Saturday, we're going to continue from where we stopped. Once again, let me give you an overview, and then we're going to pray <clears throat> and get into the teaching for today. So when Jesus said, go make disciples of all nations, go make disciples of all nations, he, he told us, com uh, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. So the curriculum of discipleship is outlined by Jesus. He said, teaching them this. What is this? That which I've commanded you. And so the Bible tells us the commandments of Jesus. The Bible says, and this is his commandment, that we believe on the Lord Jesus and love one another. So we can see already faith, believe on the Lord Jesus, love, love one another. And then we also know from that very instruction, that in itself is a command. The instruction to go make disciples is also a command. So if we bring all three together, we have the command to make disciples. We have the command to love one another. We have the command to believe in the Lord Jesus. And if you've heard me talk about up, in, and out, you find out that these three things are, um, these three things influence or are in that, those three directions. So faith is upwards towards God. Love is in towards believers. Love one another. And then he says, uh, 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 make disciples. That's out. And so that's the curriculum, basically, for discipleship. A true disciple must be growing in his relationship with God. That's the up, in his confidence, in his faith. A true disciple must be, tr must be constantly being transformed by faith, becoming a stronger believer. All right? The, a true disciple must constantly be growing in his mission outwards to those who are not in the faith. And a true believer must be growing in his love work. And there's another way to look at it, and that is what we've been calling it, which is, number one, the calling of Christ. Number two, the competencies of Christ. Number three, the character of Christ. The Bible tells us that we are being transformed into the image of, that God wants us to not be conformed to this, or will be transformed by the union of our minds. Transformed into what? Well, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, the Bible says that as many as God foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So we know the destination and we know where, what, we are, what we are being walked into. It's to be more like Christ. And so to be more like Christ, which is the goal of discipleship still, you find those three things, the up, in and out. You find the faith, love, and mission, however you want to look at it. And you find the competencies of Christ, faith, the character of Christ, love, the calling of Christ, mission. It's, it's these three things. And so every person, the way you look at yourself and say, how, how further along am I, have I gone in my discipleship, in my being discipled? Am I more on mission today than I was last year? Am I stronger in faith and all those things that have to do with up towards God than I was last year? Am I stronger in my love for God's people and in my love walk generally than I was last year? As a believer, as a disciple, you must be moving in these directions. So let's, let's, let's look at these things, because last time we spoke, we talked about 
the, comp, the, the calling of Christ. The calling of Christ. And now we want to look at the competencies of Christ. And then next week we're going to look at the uh, 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 character of Christ. And when we bring these three things together, we have the picture of discipleship, the biblical picture of discipleship. And then we're going to now take these things one by one and, and, and study them and not only know them, but be transformed. You see, that's why this is called transform, not inform, but transform. And that's why after each session, you go into meetings together with your group and you talk and you see how far you've come in the things you said before you were going to do and what you're going to do next. All right, let's pray and begin. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts. I ask that you will grant me words and thoughts from heaven so that I can speak as I should. I ask that these words and thoughts will continue to speak to us till there is fruit and manifestation. I ask for signs and wonders to be done in confirmation of your word in the lives of everyone who hears this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All right. So today we are looking at the competencies of Christ. It's, part, it's one of the modules or the curriculum of discipleship, the competencies of Christ. And then also, you can call it faith. It's more than just the word faith, the, the evidence of things not seen, you know, but it, it's part of that believing on the Lord Jesus. But then also, you can, uh, uh, so it, it's faith, it's the up component in our growth and discipleship. It's that which is towards God. So let's, let's break it down. What exactly, if we are conforming to the image of Christ, one of the ways definitely we have to conform to the image of Christ is in his competencies. If we're going to be like someone, you must be able to do what that person can do. You can't say I'm like Ronaldo, but I don't dribble. Or I'm like uh, uh, Pastor Noel, but I, I don't preach. Or I'm like uh, 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 Celine Dion, but I don't sing. No. You can be like a person only in three areas. In the way they behave, character. In the things they can do, competency. And in what they are about, calling. Can you see that? All right. And so if you want to conform to someone, those are the three areas you have to. And so what are the competencies of Christ? What are the things that Christ did so well that if we're going to be like him, we must also learn to be able to do? Well, he tells us himself. Jesus tells us, among other things, he said, or let me list it out to you, and then we're going to uh, uh, look at how that applies to us. All right. So one of the competencies of Christ is the fact that he could hear from God. Jesus heard from God accurately, super accurately. In fact, in in uh, uh, John chapter 8, and verse 28. He said this repeatedly. It's not the only time he said it, but I want to read. We're going to read several of them anyway. The Bible, Jesus speaking said in John chapter 8 and verse 28. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. Jesus was literally saying to them, the things you see me doing, I'm not doing because I just want to do them. I'm doing these things because I heard the Father say to them, his instruction is what I am following. His command is what I am obeying. In, in chapter 5 and verse 30 of the same book of John, he says this, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. This word judge here is decision. As I hear, I decide. As I hear, I render, I, I, I come to 
a choice of what to do. I decide right and wrong. I decide good and bad. I decide uh, 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 efficient, not efficient. Effective, not effective. I decide, I make a decision about things around me because I hear. Jesus was saying this. And so I, he said that my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which had sent me. I could go on and on and show you more, more, more examples of Jesus saying, I only say what I hear the Father say. I do what I see the Father and do and what he has commanded me to do. And here he plainly says it, as I hear, I decide. And so Jesus was able to have the kind of results he had. And you and I being called to conform to him must be able to say, as I hear, I judge. So that decision about who to marry, is it as you heard? That decision about where to live, location, is it as you heard? The decision about going into a business, one vocation or the other, is it as you heard? The decision about giving, is it as you heard? You know, looking around in the world today, you will know that many people don't truly hear God. Many people don't truly hear God. Because he's not the author of confusion. And so when someone comes up and says, I don't believe in first fruit, or I don't believe in titan, or I don't believe in men of God, or I don't believe in giving to church, or I don't believe in praying, or I don't believe in this, or I don't believe in that. You know, one easy way to end all arguments is to say, is that what God is telling you? <laughs> Did God tell you that? Can you put your foot down and say, God spoke to me? Because if he tells you something that is contrary to the written word, then that's not God. You know, sometimes people come to me and they're like, I, this person did this to me. I'm going to be like a husband and a wife. I am going to make sure she suffers. I'm going to make sure he suffers. I'm going to expose him. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Also question. And this is what I always ask. I tend to ask this when I think I have gotten them spiritually ready enough to answer. I ask them, what's God asking you to do? What's God asking you to do? And recently I was involved in a situation that was quite traumatic, um, involving my kids. And my wife was like, why are you so calm about this? And I said to her, what's God saying to you? You know, when now you may be out there, you're not going through anything right now, you're like, Yeah, that's the right thing to do. But when you are facing a situation that is traumatic, I'm talking about maybe you couldn't, you got back home and your kids have left home, they're not at home, and they have gone out and You try to read them, you couldn't, or something like that. You, they are missing. At that moment, I'm telling you, most people will not hear God. Most people will not even say, what's God say right now? You know. But when I came in and I, I was informed of what was going on, I just went into the room and I sat down. And I knew that it was okay. <laughs> I, I knew in my spirit, everything is okay. Relax. Everything is okay. Nothing is nothing has spoiled. Nothing is bad. Nothing has gone wrong. And so I just went off and I slept. And there are times when nothing seems to be wrong in the natural. Everything looks okay, but I'm feeling troubled. My wife will say, You're acting like you're troubled. I say, Yeah, something is off. Now I've not perfected it. I'm still conforming. I'm, I'm better at it now than I was 10 years ago. But the reality is, you and I, because as he is Jesus, as Jesus is, so are we in this world, we have those same capacities and potential. He's the firstborn. 
And we need to start acting like Jesus is the firstborn. You, you've all grown up in homes where if you were not the firstborn, you had the firstborn. If you are not the only child, you are the firstborn. And there's this, this thing that happened, you know, not even sibling rivalry, like you're fighting, but if the firstborn does it, you, you, you immediately know you can do it. <laughs> you know, and your parents will say things like, look at uh, uh, Chile do his coming first in class. Why don't you be like him? Because you can. Because you can. Chine Du is human like you. So Jesus is the first begotten from the dead. And you and I have been begotten as well. Then we, we understand that if the same womb that brought forth Jesus brought us forth. That's what the Bible actually means when the Bible says that he that sanctifies and they that are sanctified are all of one. Whereof he's not ashamed to call them brethren. That word brethren is the Greek word Adolphos. Adolphos, most of you know someone called Adolphos. Adolphos means same womb, same womb. So you came out of the same womb, the mold that brought forth Jesus. The mold through which Jesus came forth is the mold that brought you forth. The mold, the mold. And that's why the Bible says, as he is, so are you in this world. So if he could say, I do nothing. But what I hear from my father, and as I hear, I judge. As I hear, I make decisions. Then you and I can boldly expect to live the same way. That word judge is the Greek word krino. You know, when I said it's about decision, I want to read to you the dictionary definition. This is the uh, 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 Bible dictionary definition for the complete, this is for the complete, uh, uh, um, the complete word study Bible dictionary. He says, Krino, to separate, distinguish, discriminate between good and evil, select, choose out the good. Can you see that? Jesus said, I, I, I separate things, good, bad. I distinguish, discriminate between good and evil. I choose the good, I select what is right as I hear. So every true believer should keep growing in their ability to hear God. And we're going, one of the things we're going to be learning is how to hear God. How to hear God. Very, it's not complicated. All right. All right. So one of the competencies of Christ is the ability to hear God. The second one, Another competency of Christ is the ability to pray effectively. Jesus was a master at getting results through engaging the supernatural in prayer. He knew when it was time to talk to God. He knew when it was time not to talk to God, but to talk to the winds and the waves. He knew when it was time to Simply believe and speak. And we see Jesus masterfully use the vehicle of communicating with God, speaking to God and speaking to situations to change hopeless situations and turn them around. If we are going to be like Christ, one of the competencies we must learn is how to pray effectively. And one of the ways, you know, recently, I began, you know, I'm going to share with you what I've always known, and I'm going to share with you some of the things that God is teaching me recently. So I've always known that there are different kinds of prayer. There are different kinds of prayer. And we're going to be learning about these different kinds of prayer. We're going to be learning about the prayer of petition. Like when Jesus said in Mark, Mark, Matthew, Mark chapter 11 and verse 24, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. And so if you believe you receive them, you can't pray them again and again and again. And that prayer has to do with things. That prayer has to do with whatever things you desire. All right. And then there is the prayer, for instance, of thanksgiving. 
and praise. Celebrating God for what he has done already. And it's very important. And there is the prayer of commitment where you, you cast a care or your cares on God. Particularly when you are troubled in your spirit, when you are troubled about something, not, not that's in your spirit, in your mind. When you are troubled in your mind, you know, when you are troubled in your spirit, it could be your spirit indicating that something is wrong and you need to pray about it. And it's not something you just cast aside. If, if there is no reason why you are troubled, if you just feel troubled in your spirit, that's you hearing from God. But I'm talking about being troubled in your mind. I'm talking about you had, an inf you had some information. Um, there's a deadline. Your landlord came in and said you have to pay your rent. Or you've been, you bought a property and you are paying it off. And you, know, and you have a, a bill due. You have a, a deposit due. Uh, maybe, you know, different reasons. Maybe they brought out a list and they are saying that they are going to sack some people. And your department is one of the people, one of the departments that is affected. You're wondering if your name is there or not. Anything that troubles your mind, you can cast your cares about. And the prayer you pray is the prayer of commitment. There's a prayer of consecration, like when Jesus said, Heavenly Father, not my will, but thine be done. And there is a place for that kind of prayer. So I have always known that there are different kinds. In fact, there are about nine, <clears throat> at least nine known different kinds of prayer. Nine that we know, and we will look at them in the course of this training. Like I said today, I want you to see what you are, what, where you should be walking towards. And then we are going to go into details about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so, but it's one thing to understand the different kinds of prayer, but it's also to understand how to pray. And I realized that there are also, the same way that there are, that there are different kinds of prayer, there are different ways to pray. And you can pray fervently. And there is a place for fervent prayer. It's not a kind of prayer. Any prayer can be prayed fervently. I can pray the prayer of consecration fervently. I can pray, the, I can pray in the spirit, pray in tongues fervently. But fervent prayer produces power. The effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Avails much. That word fervent is a Greek word that means heated. And so there is no ambiguity now when you call it heated prayer. Because we all know what a heated argument sounds like. You don't, you don't have heated arguments that you do quietly. You don't have heated arguments that is heated, but you didn't say anything to each other. No. When you have a heated argument, it's loud. It's passionate. And they call that a heated argument, spirited argument. Well, that's the word used to describe prayer. And when the Bible says fervent prayer. And I said this before, you can, you can map, take a, a world map and begin to pick the different places where prayer is offered fervently. Where there is fervent prayer, there's heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt, the, the Amplified Bible calls it heartfelt and continued prayer. Heartfelt and continued. Heated arguments are not short. You don't just say, I don't agree. I don't agree. Bye-bye. No, I don't agree. You shouldn't have done that. This is not right. It's continued. It's continued. So the Amplified called that in that James chapter 5 verse 16, Amplified call, uses the word heartfelt, continued. Let me read that. Let me read that, you know, there's a lot to cover and sometimes we might rush through things and not get back to them. So, in case we never get back to this, let me read this to you. So, the, the King James Version says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. However, the Amplified Bible says it this way. The Amplified Bible says, 
the earnest, heartfelt earnest, in bracket explaining what earnest or fervent means, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. It is dynamic in its working. And so there is a time to pray fervently. If you want to see power made available, pray fervently. So you can, you can take a map of the world and shade using different shades of red where it's fervent and heated praying that is known, those places are known for fervent and heated praying. You shade it deep red and make it lighter, the, 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 the less fervent and heated their prayers are. In my, in my estimation, and, and I'm not a hundred percent right because I've not been to every part of the world, but in my estimation and the parts of the world I've been to and, 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 and have interacted with and known about and have friends in them, I would say that some of the most fervent kind of prayer, praying, Father God, Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh, God, those heartfelt continued prayer. You find them a lot in West Africa, in Ghana, <laughs> Nigeria. And as you come out towards like East Africa, it becomes a little less heated, but still a little fervent. And then you get into like South Africa and it's, it's less, less than that. You go to places like the US and you can say mid-range heated. You go to places like Europe and it's almost completely non-heated <laughs> prayer. And why am I saying this? You can now map, hear this, you can map out, take another map of the world and, and, and map out the places where a lot of miracles, blind eyes seeing, deaf ears being unstopped, people rising out of wheelchairs, are, are, are dead being raised. The biggest churches, people gathered all over the world to come hear the gospel. And you will find that the map of prayer and the map of miracles, signs and wonders and the demonstration of God's power are similar. You will find the biggest churches in places like West Africa. You will find the testimonies of dead being raised in those places. You will find a little bit of it further down to East Africa. You will find, you know, you go to the U.S., you have some stories of that. You go to the Europe, it's almost like non-existent. And why is that? It's because of this scripture. Fervent praying releases power, makes tremendous power available. But that's not the only way to pray. There are times that you don't have to pray fervently. I can be on my bed and have an urge to pray. And I'm lying on that bed and my wife is beside me and I can speak in tongues for one hour, two hours, lying on the bed and not even wake up. Because at that time and at that moment is the appropriate way to pray. And while the level of intensity of power may not be on that same level as when I go into my office or go into the sitting room and pray fervently, the reality and the truth is that there are certain things that this also gives you. For instance, tapping into wisdom, tapping into divine wisdom. Like we talked about, Jesus said, what I hear, as I hear, I judge. You don't need fervent prayer to hear. The Bible says that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither has entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And these things we speak, we speak, not in words that men's wisdom teach. They say we speak it fervently, these things we speak, once you're praying in the spirit and speaking in tongues, you have access to wisdom. The Bible says we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, not the wisdom of this world that comes to nothing. And so when you speak in other tongues, you're birthing and bringing forth wisdom. And so there are times like you're walking down the road, praying in the spirit. It doesn't have to be fervent. You don't have to go, oh, shut up, on the street. But have moments, have those times Maybe when you wake up in the morning and join in, in the devotion, then you pray with fervency from your bedroom. Glory be to God. So you can have the power 
and the wisdom of God. So there is a way to pray. Another thing I found out is that, I, that learning from Jesus is the fact that you need to pray in all seasons. So there, is, there are different kinds of prayer. There, is, there are different ways to pray. And they all have their value. You can't say, oh, I'm a, I'm a quiet praying person. No. You can't say, well, I'm a noisy kind of praying person. No. There are times for each of them. And you have to engage with both. But then there, there's also not only how to, uh, 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 the different kinds of prayer and the different ways to pray, but the different times to pray. And the Bible tells us the times to pray is in each season. The Bible says pray uh, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. The Amplified Version puts it this way. We just go straight to it. Pray at all times, all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the Spirit, with all manner. Can you see that there is different kinds of praying? All manner of prayer. That's different kinds of prayer. But there's also different times of prayer. And according to the Scripture, it's on every occasion and in every season. There's a reason why I'm saying that. Um, then there is a way to pray, Continu continuing in that same verse. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. So you see the different kinds of prayer. You see the different times of prayer. Then you see how to pray. Keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance. So you see the wisdom. I wish... <laughs> I hope you are getting this. See, keep a lot and watch is receiving wisdom. Strong purpose and perseverance is fervency. So you, you need to have, you need to engage those different ways to pray. But look at the times to pray. And that's one of the revelations that have flooded my heart in, the, in, in, in recent times. And how God dealt with me about it was actually from the scriptures. Um, it is in James chapter 5, and the Bible says, is that from verse 13, it says, is there any among you suffering? Is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Then he said, is there any among you that is merry? Another version says that is cheerful. He said, let him sing psalms. Can you see different occasions, but all leading to prayer and hearing from God? He's saying to us, if you are suffering, turn towards God in prayer. And if you have gotten certain results and celebrating, turn towards God in prayer. It's just different kinds of prayer. Remember he said, pray every occasion, every season with different kinds of prayer. So the kind of prayer I'm going to pray when I'm merry is Psalms. I'm going to be praising and worshiping and celebrating God, but I'm still praying. I'm still hearing the word of God. The Psalms is actually to, when the Jew heard Paul say, or had James say, sing Psalms. They were not thinking, oh, inspired song. They were simply thinking, go to the scriptures, pick one of the Psalms and sing it. And they used to sing their Psalms. You and I simply read them, but they, th those Psalms had tunes that they, they, they remember. <laughs> Praise God. And so, so it was a combination of talking to God and having and hearing scriptures, and hearing scriptures. So the Bible says, if you're going through trouble or problem or afflicted, turn to God in prayer with the right kind of prayer. What kind of prayer do you pray? It could be a prayer of supplication. It could be a prayer of casting of cares. It could be a prayer of consecration. It could be a prayer of petition where you are you are, you are making a demand from the Father. It could be a prayer of authority where you are speaking to situations and circumstances and telling the wind and the, to be still and, 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 and to obey you and, and to calm down. Or you're talking to, the, talking to your finances. It could be any kind of prayer, but there are certain prayers that address problems. Then it says that you should know when to apply these things. Like I said, we're going to learn all of them. Then it says, even when you have won a victory, 
turn towards God in praise. And that's, God was dealing with me because I wasn't doing that. I am very, I was very good. I began to do that now and I could see a difference. I'm going to explain that to you. But I was very good at praying when there was a problem. Or praying because of expected problems. Let me give an example of expected problems. So when I wake up in the morning, I pray. I'm not praying because I feel victorious. I'm not praying because I won. I'm not praying because I'm cheerful. I'm not praying because I am merry. I'm praying because I'm entering into the day and I know that the devil will want to do some things, he will want to attack in some areas, he will want to cause some trouble, and I, am, I'm, I want to be ready for him. So I pray before I step into the day. All right? And then I also pray when a problem actually happens and something goes wrong and I turn towards God in prayer. Those two kinds of prayer. Praying, you know, ahead of time for things that might happen and, you know, just hearing God about what's ahead and then praying when there is a problem specifically where the two areas I operated in, there were the two seasons that I prayed. The Bible says pray in all seasons. And I found out that when I win, when, when things are working out, when uh, 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 maybe it was a church service, you just planted a church and the place was packed out. I leave that place cheerful, excited, happy. When, when I'm believing God for a financial income, uh, for some things maybe we need to do, and then it comes in good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. And I am merry and cheerful. I found out that that season, I usually don't go turn towards God in prayer. I usually will probably turn towards TV. It's like the moment I go, ah, oh, it's done. And I usually turn towards TV, or I turn towards Netflix, or I turn towards, you know, something that is non-spiritual. Like I have finished the spirituals now. I'm done. I've gotten what I'm looking for. Before I do my next battle, let me enjoy myself a little bit. So I want to, I want to turn towards things that are carnal. And the Bible, and, and God told me when he was dealing about it, he said, that's where the devil gets you. Because you see, the seeds for the next trouble he will throw are planted in those moments. Are planted in those moments. He said, that's why I said, is any merry? It's not just one instruction that is there. I didn't just say, is any sick or afflicted? Let him pray. He, I said, is any merry? There's also an instruction for them. Pray as well. Pray Thanksgiving prayers. Listen to the word. Hear the word. That's what singing psalms in, indicates. When you're singing psalms, you are thanking God. They are psalms, but you're also hearing his word because they are his word as well. They are the written word. So he said, pray. Talk to me about that victory and listen. Go, back, go and listen to a message by Kenneth Copeland or Creflo Dollar or in your own case, those of you listening to me, Pastor Noel, and, you know, go and listen to a message at that time that you are married. And you, 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 because that's when the devil attacks. That's when the devil comes in and plants a seed for the next trouble. And you give him no room. Remember saying to myself, God, does that mean we never watch TV? Does that, because, because this covers all the seasons. I'm either in trouble or I am in victory, in merriment and cheerfulness because of victory obtained and manifested, or I am in between where I'm, there is no trouble right now going on, but not, no victory either. I'm just simply praying to prepare for what's ahead. That covers my whole life. And if all of them I'm supposed to turn in prayer, then when do I get to do other things? And God I could imagine he smiled but because of what he said to me. He said, son, I didn't say, is there any Mary? Let him only sing psalms. I said, let him sing psalms. So the instruction is to hear the word and pray when you are Mary. Hear the word and pray when you feel like you've just gotten a breakthrough. Hear the word and pray when you feel like you've just gained the victory. Hear the word and pray but then he said to me, child of God, he said, whatever you can do that goes along with hearing the word and praying, you're allowed to do. But make sure you hear the word and pray. And all of a sudden I realized what he was saying to me and what he was keeping me from 
Is it because when you turn on that TV and put on that Netflix, at that moment, you don't feel a spiritual urgency. And there are some things you could permit yourself to watch that in your moments of trouble that you are trying to deal with situations, you won't even have time to watch it. You won't even feel like watching it. If you just got a notification that you've been let go from your company and you don't know where else to go, what else to do, and you turn to God in prayer, believe me, a lot of movies will not appeal to you at that time. But when that victory happens and you feel that sense of freedom from that urgency to deal with a situation because you have gotten the result, at that moment, there are some things you could permit that are not good for your spirit. And so he said to me, he said, there are a lot of things that are not injurious to your spirit that you can do and it will not negate listening to the word and praying. The prayer of thanksgiving. And I, 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 I realized that that's true. I could play games with my family and still be in the, in the mood of prayer. I could play games with my family and still be... <laughs> and it will negate the, the hearing of the word of God. But there are certain things that I can't do along with that. And that's what I need to stay away from. And I, I shouldn't even be trying to stay away from them. If I would plug into prayer and the word in my moments of victory, I would have the strength to stay away because they don't, they don't go together. They don't go together. Jesus was like that. Let me show you. In Mark chapter 1, it's one of the competencies of Christ. That was one of the ways Jesus conducted himself. In Mark chapter 1 and verse 35, Now, you have to understand what happened before this verse, before verse 35. Let me get it, another translation that has subheadings. So let's look at what had happened before now. Jesus began, in, in, in verse 14, Jesus begins his Galilean ministry and went to preach. He called for fishermen as disciples. He cast out an unclean spirit. And from there, he went to Peter's house, healed all this in a day's work, healed Peter's mother-in-law. I mean, you will be pumped up at that time, at that point. And then verse 32, the Bible says, that at evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. This was a crusade. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. This was what just happened. That was how he went to bed. That was in the evening. And during the day, look at all, all the things that happened. This was just evening. And he went to sleep. Then in verse 35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Now you know what he probably was telling God. He was singing psalms. He was praising God. He was hearing God. He was praising God. He was hearing God. And he was praising. He was telling God, you know, I want this, I want this. You know, I thank you for this that you did. Thank you for that that you did. I want to know. When I say I want it, I mean I want to know what is going on here, what's going on there. <clears throat> he was hearing from God and he was praising. But look at that. A great while before day, daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. And when, when Simon and the disciples came to him, they sought for him and they found him and they said, hey, all men are looking for you. Those guys that came for meeting yesterday and got all those miracles, they are back again. They are looking for you. They want you to start from early this morning. And look at what he said to them. Verse 38. But he said to them, let us go into the next. He had gotten his instructions. He had heard God. Remember, I do, I make no decision but what I hear. Let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also because for this purpose I have come for. We're not going to build church here yet. Let's, we bless them. The instruction is to go to the next town. And he, he got that because he spent time 
in his moment of victory. Can you imagine if that was us today? The, the, the day before, it was like a Sunday service. From the morning till evening, it was one miracle after the other. It was, you got people signing up as partners for your ministry, the disciples. You got, you cast out devils and they ran out of the place. You went to your, one of your leader's home and his parents have been doubting your ministry and you healed the mother. Instantly she rose up and then by evening you healed multitudes of people, cast out multitudes of devils and then you went to bed. Oh boy, you would sleep like this with your head to heaven and smiling. And that's okay and that's good. You need to enjoy the victory. And in the morning, you probably feel like, yeah, I did a lot of spirituals yesterday. It's time to watch some Netflix. <laughs> it's time to allow some carnal things. You don't feel like fasting that next morning. <laughs> and that's a lesson to learn about the times to pray. So look at the three things you looked at. The different kinds of pray. We're going to look at them in detail. The different ways to pray. Fervent, quiet, under your breath. There's no silent prayer. Quiet, remember, silent means no sound. Quiet means low sound, low sound. But silent means no sound. We don't hear or see any silent praying in the Bible. We hear of people who pray quietly, but we never hear of somebody who, who thought his own prayers. He was thinking them to God. All right, so... We, we see different ways to pray, but we also see the, the times to pray. And it's supposed to be in every occasion, every season, when, you are, when it's, it's Thanksgiving time, when you are, you've gotten a victory, when you are in trouble, and in between those two, you need to pray. Finally, another competency of Christ was his ability to use his faith. Jesus used his faith like a carpenter would use a hammer. It was like he understood the rules that govern faith. There will be times he'll walk into a place and he will drive out everyone who was operating in unbelief. He knew that his faith needed its own, needed to take over that space in order to operate. There will be times he would bring the person out of the city. One man he brought out of the city and laid hands on him and the guy said, I see men as trees walking and he laid hands on him again because he knew there was a struggle with faith. So he brought him out of that city and to pray for him. He knew how to use his faith like a carpenter would use his tools and he got exact results that he wanted. It's one of the competencies of Christ. And we need to learn to operate in, like that. And in the course of this training, this semester, you are going to, we're going to talk deeply about the character of Christ. We're going to talk about the competencies of Christ. We're going to take each of these things, maybe one of them a day, and, and learn how Jesus functioned in, those, in, in that particular capacity and how we can build ourselves. And then we go ahead throughout that week, we do that. And the next week, we pick another one and we do that. And we're going to talk about the calling of Christ and how you can make disciples of all nations as well. One disciple at a time. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to pray now and release you into your various groups. And um, you're going to go ahead and discuss what you've just learned. But emphasis is on action. What are you going to do based on what you've heard? Well, first of all, give account of what you said you were going to do. I told you to keep a record because that record is your script. It's what we are. See, there's no exam for this particular training. It is that transformation we want to see. I said I was going to do this. I did it. So when we ask you at the end of this semester to write out the things you said you were going to do and what you did, you should be able to have a record somewhere. We're probably going to ask you to do that at the end of this month and then so that you can, you will do for what you've done throughout this month and last month. And then the next one will be at the end of the semester in two months time. So go into your groups, 
Give account of what you said you will do. Now, engage with the word you've heard today. What are you going to do differently? How are you going to apply this? How are you going to change in order to live what you've just heard? All right. Father, we thank you. We propose in our hearts to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And as we go into our various groups, help us by your spirit to apply this as we should. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. All right, go ahead into your various groups and make sure you participate.